This is our presentation on creatine supplementation. Okay. As humans, we have limits. Those limits are psychological limits and physical limits. Our physical limits um, are uh, limiting factors such as fatigue, muscle fatigue. For example, as we run long distances, our muscles will break down and eventually become fatigued. When we want to contract a muscle, our brain will send signals through neurotransmitters to that muscle and tell it to contract. What we mean by contract contraction is the sarcomere shortening. As we uh, contract our muscles, uh, fatigue will eventually build up and we will become tired. Okay, now I want to talk about different types of muscle contraction. There's concentric contraction. Uh, for example, me, when I bring my bicep close to my body, I'm contracting it. This is concentric. That's when the muscle shortens. And as we uh, lower that muscle and lengthen it away from our body, that's called eccentric contraction. Um, as far as our experiment goes, we're going to talk about running and how eccentric contraction plays a big role in muscle fatigue. That's because of the constant impact that our foot makes on the ground, that's the eccentric contraction, um, puts a lot of strain on our hamstrings. Okay. Negative side effects with endurance exercise. Endurance causes muscle fatigue, muscle and which causes muscle performance to be reduced. Okay. As we run, or exercise, lift weights, our muscle becomes tense. Blood vessels will be compressed, and as we continue for a long period of time, the blood flow will continue to worsen. Fatigue factors will eventually accumulate and stiffness and pain occur. Negative side effects with endurance exercise. As we continue to exercise through long periods of time, there's an increased likelihood of muscle trauma. Um, that being just inflammation to the muscle through swimming, running, biking, etc. And as we talk about inflammation in the muscle, specifically what's happening here is exactly what Josh was telling us. So as we exercise and as we use our muscles, we're going to see PGE2 synthesis is going to start putting macrophages and cytokines into our bloodstream, which then travels to the muscles. Now, what these cytokines and these macrophages do is they are what cause inflammation in our muscles. And as Josh was talking about earlier, going back to this slide, as we exercise, our muscles are getting a lot of blood flow to them, but eventually that blood flow gets cut off as our muscles tighten and as they tense up. And then as Josh was pointing out, as they do tighten and tense up, these factors, right, these cytokines and macrophages, they get stuck there. So unless we're doing a lot of stretching and a lot of cooling down after we exercise, those inflammatory factors are sticking around in our muscles, which then leads to um, our soreness 24 to 48 hours after exercise. Now with this as well in our experiment, we wanted to see what effects creatine would have on inflammation. But before we talk about our experiment, let's first talk about what we <coughs> already know about creatine. So we know that when we exercise, our body is expending ATP, which is the en energy source of the body, to cause contraction. The more we contract muscles, the more ATP we use, and eventually our muscle cells run out of ATP. So it relies on other sources, such as glycolysis, such as cytosolic ATP, and then eventually creatine. 
So what creatine does is when we supplement with it, it allows our body to take a phosphate off of creatine monophosphate, and it allows it to take that phosphate and put it on ADP to create more ATP. The more ATP we have now, the longer we can exercise because we have more energy to work with. This is one reason why bodybuilders love creatine because it gives them that extra burst of strength. Now, there's a couple of things that we wanna talk about with creatine already. So, just as we talked about, it gives them that extra burst of strength. So, weightlifters, bodybuilders, they love this stuff. But on top of that, it also helps with high intensity training. So, people who also do a lot of HIIT workouts as well. On top of this, we know that creatine is going to help us increase glycogen storage by 40%. Glycogen is another source of energy that our body can rely on to create ATP. So if we are supplementing with creatine and we are allowing our body to store more glycogen, that allows our body to have more energy sources to rely on throughout a longer endurance workout. On top of that, we also know that creatine can help with weight gain. Bodybuilders love this because bodybuilders want to look bigger, they want to look fuller. And what happens is as creatine enters our cells, water follows creatine. So it allows our muscle cells to look a little bigger than they did before, causing our overall muscle to look bigger than it did before. And with this as well, we also know that creatine helps maintain muscle integrity. So this is muscle strength for long endurance training, as well as it can help reduce muscle damage all things that athletes are looking for and things that athletes want to have. On top of this, we know through our research that there's a couple things that we can do to increase the effectiveness of creatine. And we found that as athletes took creatine and then they followed it with a carbohydrate drink, it would allow the athletes to have more glycogen so their body was better able to use creatine as an energy source. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about our experiment, exactly what we did, and then the effects that we saw that creatine had on inflammation, um, and James will be talking to us about that next. Okay, so uh, to start out for the experiment, what we did is we got a group of <clears throat> long distance runners, marathon runners, and we made sure that they um, were just fit enough to be able to do a really long distance training, really long distance exercise for the study. Uh, so as the slide says, we had them do 90 kilometers of cycling and then 21 kilometers of running. So for this, we split them up into two different control groups. Uh, we had one control group uh, have creatine and then one for the placebo. So the um, one with creatine, the control, control group that we made that had the creatine, we made sure that um, we put them through first what's called the loading phase with the creatine. So with this, we would give them 20 grams of creatine a day for about five to seven days, depending. And then with the, uh, after that was done and the loading phase was complete, we'd give them around three to four grams of creatine a day just to continue on with the uh, creatine in their cells. But they usually didn't need any more than three to four grams a day. Um, now with the placebo, obviously we just uh, gave them fake creatine or just just some random um, sugar that wasn't actually creatine and then we made sure that neither of them knew which one had the creatine and which one did not so uh, then we had them run this and uh, cycle this and this is some of the results that we found so uh, one of the things first things that we noticed right off the bat is creatine would actually increase muscle stability so these runners and uh, cyclers who had the creatine, our control group that had taken the creatine were um, more, they were quicker, they finished the race quicker, as well as they actually had less injuries um, and just less muscle stiffness, less muscle inflammation, and we wanted to study more about why that was. Um, also, we realized, so our study was really focusing on 24 to 48 hours after this period, and we realized that 24 to 48 hours after their pain and muscle weakness would be a lot less, uh, significantly less than our control group, the placebo group, who had not taken uh, creatine. So once again, we wanted to explore more of why that was, um, and we kind of get more into that in just a second. So for this next slide, we want to go over some cytokines that we were studying uh, and that we were tracking in these runners. So TNFA and PGE2. These were the two main inflammatory, so they were pro-inflammatory cytokines um, that would increase inflammation in muscle cells, which would then increase um, 
uh, macrophages in the muscle cells causing more inflammation, uh, swelling, as well as the pain and, and fatigue that we'd see 24 to 48 hours typically later. So uh, TNFA is really, uh, so PG2 is the most significant one. TNFA is one of the runner ups, but it would just increase the production of PGE2. So um, these cytokines, uh, uh, another one of the pro-inflammatory cytokines would also include IL-1B. Um, and IL-1B and TNFA together would increase in the uh, placebo, or the placebo group that we had, they'd increase more than in the uh, group that we had had on creatine. Uh, but the thing about these ones is they would really just induce more PGE2 production. So um, this PGE2 would cause a lot more pain and swelling 24, 48 hours later, and the TNFA and IL-1B increase PGE2. Now for this next slide, um, I wanna talk about IL-6. So IL-6 is another cytokine that we studied in our, the plasma levels. But something cool about this one is they're actually anti-inflammatory cytokine. So um, it would do a few cool things that we noticed, but uh, the main thing is that it was an anti-inflammatory. And the reason why is because it would inhibit the TNFA production. If you remember from the previous slide, TNFA production would increase PGE2 production, which was really the pro-inflammatory cytokine that we studied. Um, so IL-6 would inhibit TNFA um, and it would increase also blood glucose levels, which is all obviously very important. And it would help to just keep up with their blood glucose levels because they're running and running these miles and miles and miles. Um, and we want to make sure that they're not passing out or having low blood sugar during this. So the creatine would actually help with their blood sugar as they're, they're running. Um, it would also help with di disorders um, like type 2 diabetes just because it would increase insulin sensitivity. So the cells would um, be able to take in their glucose easier when they were actually on the screen during these long distance uh, exercises. So this first graph that I wanna talk about here, this is the PGE2 uh, graph. So this was the main one that we were studying that was the pro-inflammatory cytokine that would cause pain, inflammation, uh, and weakness, fatigue in the muscles 24 to 48 hours. So if you notice here in the graph, um, we have the before the race uh, and the placebo group and the creatine group were very similar in the before section. Um, but then if you notice 24 hours afterwards, their PGE2 levels were extremely high compared to the creatine uh, group. So those who are on creatine had up to five, four or five times less uh, PGE2 in their plasma, in their blood, going into their muscle cells than the placebo group. Um, now, if you look at this next one, the next, um, the next cytokine that we studied was uh, TNFA. And if you notice, it's very similar, same thing. So we would, um, the, the ones who took creatine were around two times less than the ones who uh, were on our placebo group. So this next group, uh, sim very similar to the INFA. Uh, it's the similar trends, those who had creatine were about double less INFA. Um, and those who were on the placebo had normal amounts, but this is why they would actually have more pain and inflammation 24 or 48 hours later. This next group is the IL-1B. Uh, it's the same thing, just an inflammatory cytokine that we studied and same trends. Those who had creatine, much, much less than those on the placebo. So this one is a really interesting one, the IL-6. This one, if you notice, if you remember the IL-6 was the cytokine that actually was anti-inflammatory and would help lower the TNFA production. So IL, IL-6 was actually increased in those who had creatine and decreased in the placebo. So the good cytokine that would cause less pain, less inflammation was increased. So uh, what we found our conclusion is that uh, those who had creatine on these long distance journeys, long distance runs, cycling, whatever it was, uh, actually have less pain and less inflammation, less fatigue in their muscles 24 to 48 hours later. And this is why, this was the reason for it.